Welcome back everyone. I wanted to share with you a new type of lighting circuit that I designed about two months ago. I'm just getting around to posting it. As you know, there's two different types of lights in Rust. There's the lights that require low-grade fuel to run. These have to be turned on and off manually. They also use low-grade fuel, which sometimes can be hard to get. And then there's the ceiling lights, which use electricity and electricity is pretty easy to get in rust and you don't really have to worry about consuming too much of it or or running out or anything like that once you're established so a lot of players tend to use the electrical lights as lights in their base as opposed to the low grade lights but there's some advantages to the low grade lights for one i think they look cool second they don't appear to impact your frame rate quite as much as the electrical lights the ceiling lights now that's entirely subjective, if you had a hundred of these in your base I'm sure that it would kill your frame rate kind of like the ceiling lights do, but it just seems to me that having a few of these in your base doesn't do the same thing to your frame rate as having a few of the ceiling lights. So I've developed a new circuit, I haven't seen a circuit like this anywhere else on YouTube. If someone else has developed a simpler version of this please let me know in the comments. But what this circuit does is it automates low grade or wood burning lights. I'm talking about the fireplace, the furnace, the campfire, tuna can lamp, my favorite, the Chinese lantern, and the regular lantern. So that's one of the annoying things about these types of lights is you have to remember to turn them on and off. And sometimes if it's already nighttime, you can't find it in your base because you can't see. And you just run into all these these uh, overhead maintenance issues. Like what if I, it's you know uh, five minutes from now it's going to be daylight but I want to leave my base right now and I don't feel like coming back to turn the fireplace off so it's going to burn up all the wood while I'm out farming and then I get back to a bunch of charcoal that I don't need. Well this circuit fixes that and yes it requires quite a few blueprints and some resources but it's more of just the novelty factor why I think it's so interesting. So what this circuit does is it uses the solar panel to know whenever it's daylight and whenever it's nighttime. So the, the solar panel is, is multifunction. It, it generates electricity for the battery, but it also is used as an indicator as to what time of day it is. If the solar panel is receiving light, it must be daylight. If it's not receiving light, it must be nighttime. And then the exclusive OR switch and the AND switch and timers, they all work in a conjunction to automate, fully automate, by the way, these types of lighting. So let's go ahead and see how it works. So right now it's daylight. The solar panel knows that it's daylight because it's receiving the full amount of sun. I can simulate nighttime by putting a wall in front of it. So that's what I'll do. Now that the solar panel is no longer receiving light, the circuit knows that and turns on all of the low grade or wood burning lights. You can see every single one of them turned on at once. So this works with all of those different types of light and, and heat sources. And what's really cool about this circuit is it turns itself off. So if I remove the panel, this, this, this wall here, to simulate that now it's daylight, in other words, I'm going to remove the wall, the solar panel will start getting energy again, the circuit will know that it's daylight, and it will extinguish all of the lights by itself. So it's a fully automated circuit that will turn on and off your normally manual light and heat sources. It, the, the genius part about this circuit, in my opinion, is that the, the solar panel is multifunction. It's used as an indicator of whenever the sun is out. It also charges the battery. But it's also the use of the sprinkler. I found out just on a whim that the sprinkler extinguishes all these types of heat and light sources and I haven't seen any other rust circuits use it that way. Usually it's used for farming, for watering your plants. Well it can also be used to extinguish things. So whenever you put these in conjunction with one another it turns out you could make something pretty useful. And yes I understand the redundancy of using all these electrical pieces to do something that a ceiling light can do but again some people just prefer the look of the, you know, the warm glow of the low grade lights versus the institutionalized look, the hospital look of the ceiling light. 
Now, don't get me wrong, I do love some ceiling lights, I usually use them in my bases, but they do kill the frame rate once you get over like 10 of them, and they also, they're also some weird light clipping wherever it clips through the walls in a weird way. Gives your base kind of a weird look if it has multi-stories. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. Now, there is a, so, some caveats to this circuit. There's three timers in it, and at first I thought you could do it with two, but I ran into this problem where if you see how the, the solar panel has 20 power right now, once it goes down to 18, and then 16, and then 14, you know, as the sun goes down, the solar panel starts receiving less and less light, the circuit keeps resetting by itself, and that's what the third timer fixes. This timer is going to be set to 1800 seconds or 15 minutes whenever you put it in your circuit. And that means that the, the the circuit itself will only activate once every 15 minutes. In other words, one full night cycle. And I was having a, a lot of issues with the circuit because it, it something about whenever this the power from the solar panel goes down, whenever this value changes from 20, it's like the circuit resets itself every time. I'm not really sure exactly what causes that. It may just be the way that the circuitry is programmed in, in Rust, but the, the third, this third timer here fixes that. What you'll need to make the circuit, six electrical branches, three timers, a fluid switch pump, a sprinkler, an igniter, a medium battery, one solar panel, an AND switch, an exclusive OR switch, and then you can choose what kind of heat or light source you want, a fireplace or a tuna can, la tuna can lamp, or it could be a, a, a furnace or a campfire. You'll need some type of water source, so if you look up here, I'm actually using a water barrel. This can be a water catcher, or a pump, or anything that stores water and has an output. So as long as it has an output and it can store some water, that'll work. And that's all there is to it. Once you get this activated, you can do... You can uh, impress your friends and your family, if your family's watching you play Rust, and have this cool automated furnace circuit. Uh, one idea of mine is to put, you know, fully encapsulate a fireplace in a, 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 uh, a an area of your base that you can't get to, like perhaps on the outside in the window or something like that, and then wire this thing up and <laughs> your pastors by will see that your your fireplace keeps turning on and off by itself and they'll have no idea how you, how you do it. And you can do all sorts of interesting things like that with this circuit. So I appreciate everyone watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see y'all next time.